Well, good morning. We uh, are starting a brand new series today. We're going to be talking about the protection of God. And if you think about it, you know, how much has God protected you throughout the years in life? As I turn 45 here soon, I just think back of all the times the Lord has protected me. Have you ever gotten to your 40s and just like started pondering a bunch of different stuff? Anyone else? Is that what's called a midlife crisis? Is that the thing? So, you know, I've, I've just been thinking about how much the Lord has protected me. And it's not only like a physical protection, but also mentally he's protected me. Spiritually he's protected me. I've had a lot of battles. You know, and it, it feels like life is, is full of a lot of battles. I mean, even coming in this morning, um, it's kind of scraped off here. But, you know, like somebody just wrote, some in spray paint all across our windows, you know, this, so that's what we walk into in the morning. It's like, okay, life's, life's full of battles. Like you, you deal with stuff and it's good to know that God is protecting me, that he's protecting me. There was two prayers that my mom prayed when I was growing up, um, that she would pray over my life. And one was, I pray Neil gets away with nothing. <laughs> parents in the room. <laughs> I pray he gets away with nothing, that he gets caught in every single thing he does. And it was true. One year, I had nine seatbelt tickets. Okay? Nine seatbelt tickets in a year. Just think of the money. You know, you'd think I just put on a seat. I got away with nothing. Everything I did, I always got in trouble. The other thing that she prayed was that the Lord would protect me. Lord, protect him, because I can't. And uh, being a crazy teenager and, um, you know, there was nothing my parents could do to protect me from the life I was living. So she just prayed, Lord, protect him. Protect him. And if you think about it, that's actually the same as that prayer. Let me get away with nothing and then, Lord, protect him. Letting me get away with nothing is actually the Lord's protection. Because then I start thinking I can outsmart things, and I can get away from God, and I can, you know, make things happen on my own. So my mom prayed that over my life. Protect him. Protect him. The Lord is our protector. As we start this new series off today, we're talking about Jehovah Majin. Jehovah Majin, it is a name of God. This entire year, we've been focusing every single month on the name of God. This month is Jehovah Majin. Go ahead and say that with me. Jehovah Majin. And what that means is that the Lord is your shield. He is your protector. It's not an attribute of God. It's not something that, you know, somebody else has talked about who God is. It has done in, in the past in their life. It's actually a name of God. It is Jehovah Majin. He is the shield. He will protect us. He will guide us. He will lead us. He will protect us. Not only physically, but mentally, spiritually. God is the protector. He is our shield. And so this month, we're going to be looking at the story of Elijah in the Bible and looking at how God protected Elijah all throughout his life. Elijah is an interesting character in the Bible. He's found in the Old Testament in 1 Kings, and he's also found in the New Testament. We find Elijah a lot. So John the Baptist, which was Jesus' cousin, who Jesus said no man it has no greater man has ever walked this earth. John's dad said he's going to walk in the power of Elijah. He heard the word of the Lord that your son is going to walk in the power of Elijah. And this is in the New Testament. Somebody from the past. He's going to walk in the power of Elijah. Elijah is also found in the New Testament when Jesus is transformed on the top of the mountain and Moses and Elijah come and see the transformation and they all gather together. So Elijah is like this really important character in the Bible. It's a Jewish custom around 
uh, Passover time that you would actually, during, during the Passover, you would make a table, make a spread, and then you'd pour a cup of wine and you'd fill it to the very, very brim. And then you would open the door to your house and you would invite Elijah to come to the table because they believe that when Elijah comes, that we'll be stepping into the mosaic time of our life, which means that there will be peace among the earth. And so Elijah is a really important character in the Bible. But the other part of Elijah that we're going to find out in 1 Kings is that Elijah was a warrior. And warriors have shields. You have to be able to defend yourself. And you're going to see how Elijah would start fights and God would protect him. He would, be, uh, he would say the word of the Lord. So Elijah was a prophet, but he's also a warrior. Very different than, than a Jeremiah. He was actually a warrior. He would like challenge other gods. You'd bring your God, and I'm going to talk to my God, and we'll see who wins. That's how Elijah went throughout the Bible. So we're going to look at him in 1 Kings Notice there's not a book called the book of Elijah. And the reason is, is because at this time, like there wasn't books in the Bible after prophets. So we're picking it up in 1 Kings 17. Elijah just comes on the scene and we're picking up. Here's the prophet of God and we're going to see what he does and how God provides for him and protects him. So it's uh, 1 Kings 17.1. It says, now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbul in Gelid said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. So Ahab and Jezebel are the king and queen. And what happens in in the book of Kings, you see, is just this transgression of kings that started off following God and following Jehovah as their God and Yahweh as their God. And then so Ahab comes in and he says, no, we're not following God anymore. We're actually going to follow Baal. And we want everybody to start following Baal. And so Elijah says, like, you screwed up. So as soon as I speak again, there will be water. But until then, there's going to be a drought across the entire land because you've told people to fall away from God. So Elijah goes directly to the king and says this. There's going to be a season of drought. In verse 2, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him, and he went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. So he says this word to the king, picks a fight for the most part. You made a mistake, drought on your land. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here. So he has Elijah go away to a different spot. And he's going to be there for about three years. That he's being fed by ravens bringing him meat. I just want to say I'm thankful I'm not Elijah. Because I don't know I'd eat the meat of a raven. You know, just dropping meat on your plate. And bringing him bread. So these ravens are flying in bread and meat each day. I don't know if it's cooked. I don't know. Is it fish? Like, what, what is this meat? I don't know. But they're dropping it off, and here's your food for the day. Man. And then he has a brook set aside for him. Because remember, the entire land is going to go into a drought. And so he has Elijah set up by a brook, and he's taken care of. As I was thinking about that passage, you know, sometimes God calls us into something that we're really not 100% ready for, and so there's a season of getting ready. And I kind of want to say that's Elijah in this story right here. You know, God called him to say this word to Ahab. He did what the word of the Lord had told him to do, and then the Lord actually takes him away from that, 
and prepares him. Okay, Elijah, you're going to learn to trust me. How trusting is it to just have birds flying in food to you, to take care of you, all of your needs? Pretty amazing, right? Thank you. Verse 7. So sometimes late, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. And I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, hey, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and please bring me a piece of bread. Notice the word of the Lord came to Elijah to give to the widow. The word of the Lord didn't come to the widow. So, so now, you know, you're trusting God times two. You have to tell somebody else to do something for you. And, and God actually calls them to a widow who's out gathering sticks. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. And I'm gathering a few sticks to take them home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and then we'll die. This is our very last meal. They have nothing else left. There's a drought across the land. There's famine across the land. She has nothing else left. But yet the word of the Lord came to Elijah to ask somebody who has very, very little, not someone who has a storehouse of food. The word of the Lord comes to Elijah to ask her, would you make me something to eat? Somebody has nothing really left to give, exhausted all resources, and doesn't that seem like really true in life? Because so many times when I'm really low on compassion, when I'm really low on passion in general, or when I'm really low on mercy or joy, God surrounds me with like 15 people that need all four. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing here, Lord? Can I get an amen? So when you're running really, really low, and that jar is so empty, I have nothing left to give. Listen to what this widow does. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as, <laughs> do as you have said. Go ahead and make your meal for yourself and your son. But first, make me a small loaf of bread. <laughs> Why? Manners, Elijah. Manners. Jeez, buddy. From what you have and bring it to me. And then make, your, make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry. Sorry, the jar of flour will not be used up. Will you say will not? Will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour did not get used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping in the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. In a time of desperation, in fear, in despair, God turned the whole thing around to show that he is the great provider and he will protect her. He sends Elijah to her. And she thinks she has nothing left to give. She has a little bit at the very, very bottom of the well to give. And God multiplied that and kept her going until the drought ended and there was rain in the land again. A 
A couple of phrases from this passage that I love for us to consider is verse 5. So he did what the Lord had told him. He did what the Lord had told him. Go ahead and say that with me. He did what the Lord had told him. Verse 5 says, Elijah did what the Lord had told him. Verse 15 says this, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. Man, how much harder is it to hear? Like you, if I hear something from God, I feel like I'm pretty secure in that. Like I heard from the Lord to have somebody else hear from God and then invite me into giving away my very last stuff. How much faith does it take, right? That's like times two, isn't it? Like God, I'm okay hearing from, but like somebody else telling me what God has said, that's hard. So her faith is times two type faith. And so the Lord tells Elijah to tell her, she takes Elijah at his word and God provides. God is Jehovah Majin. He will protect us. He will provide for us. He will protect us. He is our shield. And we can cooperate with his protection. We can actually stand in his shield, stand behind him as our shield, and cooperate in that and and operate that God is the one that's protecting me. He protected Elijah. He protected this widow from famine by... They did what the word of the Lord had told them. As we do, God does. As we do, God does. So if I walk in alignment with God, God does. But when I put down God as my shield and try to do things on my own, sometimes I make a lot of messes and I get very hurt. As we do, God does. Elijah hears from God, and he does. The widow hears from Elijah, and she does. God's protection is so much better when we let him protect us. I know that's like really simple stuff, but God's protection is so much better when we let him protect us. When we let him be our shield. A couple of ways that you can apply this passage to 2023. We're in 2023. This is June 2023. You guys, this is it. And here's a couple of ways that you can apply this passage. Is as God's protection, as we put God as number one priority in our values, his protection reigns on top of us. It's like an umbrella of protection. That God is the number one value of our life. And as we stand in that, we are protected by the Lord. He's the number one value. He's the most important thing to us. He's the number one in categories. He's numero uno. So today, where do you find the Lord? Where do you find God? If you're taking categories of life, like what is the most important thing to me? Is number one career? Is number one security? Is number one some relationship? How many of you know that relationships change? And man, when you put a relationship as number one and then something happens in the relationship, you just find yourself like, oh my gosh, like I feel so alone. I feel so abandoned. But God wants to protect you. And so we can put him as number one category on the list of categories. One of the things that uh, I've I've noticed, I live right next to uh, TBK on Forest Grove out there. It's a big sports complex. It was Mother's Day weekend, Mother's Day morning at 8.45 in the morning. The entire parking lot was full of people full to the brim to the brim like signs drop off your kids here because we've got this baseball game it's mother's day sunday i know i'm the only one that thinks this way (laughs) but i drove by and my heart just broke 
We wonder like what our kids are going to value in life. And then like I can tell you what those kids will value. I, I, can, I can teach you right now. If Mother's Day weekend is set aside for baseball, then that's what they're going to value. What is the number one value of our life right now? What's number one? What takes its place? I can't tell you how many people have had dreams from the Lord of a business or an adventure from God, and then all of a sudden the dream becomes the number one priority in that category as opposed to the Lord. He's Jehovah Majin, and he wants to be King of kings and Lord of lords over our life. I've heard the word busy so much today. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> For the last couple months. I want to give you a great acronym to take home today. Busy. Being unavailable to serve Yahweh. To serve Yahweh. Being unavailable. I find myself so busy. I'm so busy. And God wants to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we're so busy running around trying to make everything happen on our own. Remember, the Lord sent ravens to bring food, to bring bread. If God calls you to something, he's going to take care of your needs. We can find ourselves so busy and God's like, hey, I want you to serve me. I'm too busy for that. So I want to invite you into something. And today I'd love to invite you into changing your busy into bazi. I am so bazi. I am being available to serve Yahweh. So bossy. So bossy right now. Say it with me. I am so bossy. God, what do you have for me today? What is your agenda? So the Lord calls us to compassion and to serve and to love people. And then we find ourselves so busy. And we can turn that around and go, you know what? I am just bossy for the Lord right now. Just bossy at school. I'm bossy at work. I'm bossy with my kids. Just bossy. Being available to serve the Lord with everything that you have. Not just like a component of it, but to say, God, you are first, number one priority of my life. That's one way that we can apply this in 2023. And the second way is this, is giving God our first fruits. If he's number one, we can give him our first fruits. He wants to protect us, putting him first, giving our best to him, our agendas, our finances, our time, our priorities, for God to go, hey, this is your very, for us to go, God, this is my very first fruits. This is the best I got. And through that, he protects us. He leads us. He guides us. He, he shields us. We don't find ourselves so busy giving everybody else our first fruits. That busyness creates anxiety. It creates stress. God is inviting us to be bossy and saying, God, I want you to have number one. You know, the Lord wants to protect your finances. I'm going to let you know right now, I have a special word of the Lord today. Like, seriously, he wants to protect your finances. And here's how he's going to do it is you're going to be a vibrant, thriving person. You are going to be thriving in the categories of finances. And as we do, he does. So what that means is giving God our very first fruits, trusting him with tithing. Trust, him, trust the Lord with tithing. As we step away from that and we're like, I don't really trust God in that. And then we just kind of step under the umbrella. We step away from God's provision. Trust the Lord with tithing. Our very first fruits. I had a conversation with somebody that was telling me, <laughs> that was really cute. But they said, um, hey, I spent all my money at the bar uh, this weekend. You know, I got paid on Friday. I spent all my money at the bar but, you know, I have like 25 cents, 30 cents to like throw in the, in the tithe bucket. That, that's really cool, isn't it, Neil? I'm like, no, you're completely missing the point. Like God gets your first fruits, not the bar. I don't know. I, I got to teach this stuff because I'm telling you, like it gets twisted and people just don't understand. Like as you tithe, you step into the Lord's protection. 
You really truly do. He will protect you. It's amazing. We have experienced it time and time again. I've seen it in this church time and time again. It's tithing our our time, tithing our, our lives and saying, God, you know what? I'm putting you first. You get the first fruits. Jehovah Majin, will you throw that up there? And this is how I saw this, this passage this week, is he wants to be our umbrella to completely cover our lives. He wants to protect you. He wants to protect you. And so you can come under his umbrella today and say, you know what, God, I have been really busy and I'm going to turn that into Bozzy. God, you know what, I've given you like secondary everything in life and I'm actually going to change these categories around and I'm going to put you at the very, very top. Put him at the very top of the list. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Just lead and guide us. Lord, I just pray for each person in this room that's considering Uh, these words that how we can apply this or what it looks like to trust you like even a trustworthiness of wow you're gonna like actually provide for me because you called me to this anybody in this room that's just feeling a call from the Lord into something that's just such a risk just want to pray for faith for every single one of us every single one of us Give us faith, Lord, to trust you. Lord, would you sort out our priority list today, our value system, Lord? I just want to bless each and every person that made it this morning, that obviously this is a high priority to them. And so, Lord, just bless that, encourage that, continue that, Lord, that anything that would want to come up against that, that that there would be um, just strength to continue. You know what? This is a high priority to me. It's a high priority to God and His church. It's just such a high priority. So just bless that this morning. Just continue that. Lord, would you just make us um, available this entire week? Would you remove clutter as we step into uh, a summer season and and, um, just enjoying being out and about. Lord, would you just remove clutter, anything that's just taken up space. Lord, would you remove that and make us available for you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.